Hey, Marnie here. I am showing you my healing altar today so that you can see the tools that I work with and want to use them for. Um, I always find this really fascinating. Every spiritual tradition has different things that they use for different purposes. So um, I'm going to start first with the candle. And the candle is representational of light, the sun, um, source, the universe, God. It is purity and love and uh, always on the altar. And during the course, I actually teach you some really neat things to do with that light um, to help keep your chakras clean and growing and healthy. Um, and then next we have the four archetypes in the Peruvian tradition. And the south is represented by the serpent. This piece I bought um, on a, my trek to Sedona. Uh, it's made of iron wood, which is actually very hard to get at this point um, as it's been over harvested, but it was carved by the Native Americans in the area. So um, though I'm not a huge snake person, this piece is very, um, it's a beautiful piece and very representational of the earth, I feel, because it comes from ironwood. It was carved by native peoples uh, and so on. Then this, it represents the west. This is the jaguar or the puma or the panther, depending on what continent you live on, is how they characterize this cat. Um, but this was, I bought in Peru when I was there a couple months ago. and. Um, it mulches the heavy energies for us while we're doing our work. Um, I have a lot of cat medicine in my in my bag, and so I love this piece because it really those jaws. Like I'm going to eat that negative stuff. I just love that, um, um, and it's a beautiful heavy piece and very active, which I love. Um, the hummingbird represents the north, and the north. Um, isn't this beautiful? I bought it from um, actually a craftsman on Amazon, believe it or not, but they, uh, he hand carves those and I just thought that was really beautiful. And Hummingbird teaches us to live in the stillness and appreciate the beauty. And then we have the condor or eagle. Um, this I also bought in Peru. Um, not particularly, was never super fond of the condor. It's a vulture here in the United States. Um, also, we have condors, but um, we did this beautiful journey in Peru and it really changed how I felt about this a magnificent bird. And uh, it represents the east. So that's our four directions. Then the stones here in the middle, except for this one, this is my Herkimer diamond. It's not actually diamond diamond, but it's a Herkimer. And it uh, is great for healers specifically. It's very protective. Uh, it takes on any energies that are floating around that don't belong to you. So it's always on my altar. These other stones here are my Kuyas. And the Kuyas are used in several ways. One, they um, actually, when we are going through training, we select Kuyas or they select us and they are imbued and charged with certain and particular abilities and um, purposes. And um, I am a big crystal fan. I love crystals. So I didn't just pick ordinary rocks. I picked stones that really meant something to me that were specific to shamanic healing um, that decided to come home with me. <laughs> so, um, so I used them when in distant healing, and I'll show you in the next video, in distant healing, I actually lay them out to represent the chakras so that when I bring your energy field, they actually sort of anchor into the stones, um, which is lovely. If you're here in person, sometimes I will use them to help uh, clear a chakra or um, kind of dig at the root of something. I'm always guided to do this by spirit and um, it shows me what stone it wants on which chakra and and I just follow and it it always helps so they are my personal medicine but I also use them in my healing practices uh, this is a pendulum 
and I use this specifically to track the energy, see where it's blocked, and then when I'm finished to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Uh, this is a bell that I bought in Peru. Um, it has an owl on it, as you can see. I purchased this uh, directly from uh, some shamans and they blessed it for me, which uh, is super special and important to me. I love that. I find that sound, uh, color, light, uh, music, I, I use everything at my disposal when I'm doing a healing session because I find that the more layers that you can add on, the more you can get to. So I like to use anything and I'm also again guided by spirit to what what needs to be used. Sometimes if I just cannot get a chakra to clear, it's stuck, something's going on there, uh, the sound will help um, move that energy so that it can get unstuck. So I use the bell, I also use the singing bowl. Isn't that beautiful? That was given to me by my stepdad um, many, many years ago. And I love singing bowls, but I have never bought another one because this one is so very special to me. And then this is a tuning fork and it is in the tune of C, which is uh, the root chakra and also earth. Uh, so I will use this often. Um, we need to ground and this is the perfect tool to use. And I received this from my father for uh, Christmas one year. So um, everything that I use has very special meaning to me and therefore has special meaning during our session. Um, and I'll just tap that and I'm sure you can't hear this because you can't really hear a tuning fork, but I'll actually place it on the chakra and that helps again sort of ground even out if your chakras really uh, agitated um, that helps kind of bring things into balance uh, let's see the rattle this you will hear a great deal and during a healing session it's how i wake up your energy body it's how we um, open the chakras how we close the chakras uh, and how i send your energy back to you how i call it and how i send it back um, and this i bought um, off of a website called Ch shaman's market and um, but these are all made by uh, artisans so it's not it wasn't mass produced but i chose this one because it has the moon and the sun uh, which is of course balance it represents male and female energy yin and yang light and dark uh, and balance in general so i find that's um, beautiful symbolism to use. This stone is my crystal wand basically and I use this to clear out crystallized energy in the energy field. Um, this is a beautiful stone. I bought it directly from the gem miner. Um, he came, traveled to North Carolina and I selected this. Well, it selected me. <laughs> Let's be honest. That's how stones work, right? They select us. Um, and I was like, I don't really care how much it is. I have to have it. And so um, I use this in all of my healing work. It's a, it's a beautiful stone. That's what I bought it for specifically. These are palisanto sticks and this is a sacred wood and you burn it and it clears the energy in the room like immediately if have you ever been in a building and the, the feeling is icky or the room feels not right or somebody's just left that's very irritating or anxious and that the energy has been uh, left and it's it doesn't feel good um, this uh, like sage and smudge is used it, this is in the same way. However, I find that the vibration of the Palo Santo is higher and therefore does an even better job at cleansing and clearing. Um, this is my Make It Sacred spray. I make it myself. It is uh, distilled water and essential oils. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, crystals. Um, I. The shamans in Peru use Florida water. Many traditions use Florida water. It's not something that I like because it's full of chemicals and artificial fragrances. So I make my own um, at home and I uh, people love it. It smells beautiful. And um, 
I remember the first few times I used it, people were like, oh, you should sell that. It's amazing. So I do. <laughs> Not that I'm making a plug, but I do sell it if you're interested. Um, I use it in the same way as the Palo Santo. When I do a cord cutting, I will use the sacred spray to cleanse the energy field from that cord cutting. Um, and it's, it's just a lovely way to, to clean that energy. This is uh, my fan. When I was going through training, um, one of the archetypes showed me an image of this fan. It looked pretty much just like this and told me that's what I was to make, to use in my ceremonies and to honor that particular archetype. And so uh, these are shells that I had and I don't remember where they came from. But these feathers I bought from a gentleman who has these beautiful parrots and the feathers fell off. So the birds were not harmed. They were ethically acquired. But um, I don't know if you've noticed, this is sort of my favorite color. <laughs> so, so I use this again in helping to cleanse the energy field and uh, removing anything that's stuck. Um, I use it to, when this is burning, to move the smoke around because unlike sage, Palo Santo does not smoke in the same way. It takes a lot of effort and uh, to keep it going and to get any smoke out of it. So I'll use the fan for that. Let's see. This um, is a special feather. I was uh, guided to use it one time um, when I was clearing someone's energy field, I felt like they needed to be sewn up and um, they spirits showed me to use the feather like a needle and thread. And um, so I'm always guided when it's time to use this beautiful feather. Um, it was gifted to me by a hawk. It fell and landed in front of me. So um, it's very special to me because of that. Let's see. These are all stones that I picked up specifically in Peru at the different temples um, and sacred sites that we went to. This is uh, a Machu Picchu stone and um, Ollantambo, Ollantaytambo <laughs> and um, the Condor Temple, different places, different sacred sites. We were told to select stones and bring them home with us. So they all have radiate a beautiful vibration from those sacred sites. Um, they were picked up also while we were in ceremony with the shamans. So um, they hold a lot of um, magic, if you will. <laughs> These are called, um, I'm drawing a blank, <laughs> chumpy stones. They're called chumpy stones and each one is carved. Uh, that was a condor. They all have, um, this is the hummingbird, a uh, certain number of points and there are seven of them all together and they're used in um, divination and we these were specifically used for me when I received the Nusta rites from the Cuero in Peru um, and they're just they were hand carved by by them they blessed them and I received ceremony with them so these are super special I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to incorporate them or use them, but um, they have a lot of en beautiful energy that I like to bring to this space. So let's see, I think I've covered everything. This is um, a hand that I purchased in Peru. This is the uh, kintu um, or the coca leaf. It's really the coca leaf, um, which is very important in their culture, mostly because of the altitude and, and they use them to uh, as herbal medicine to help heal with altitude sickness and things like that. Um, I am very drawn to hands, obviously, because I work with my hands every day. It's the energy. And so for me, hands are very sacred. And when I saw this, I had to have it. Um, and this is just a little stone that um, it's a tree agate. So it's about abundance. And um, I want to always make sure I have abundant, beautiful energy to give and to heal with. This little piece is from the Amamaru portal. And um, we did ceremony here. It was quite beautiful. I bought this off of a little girl uh, who was selling her wares outside of the, the portal. And um, 
it's a beautiful place to journey and that's what we did when we were there we journeyed and so I, I bought this so that I could bring it home and whenever I wanted to journey to that place that I had um, my own portal so to speak to get there okay I think I've covered everything I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my tools and I'll see you in the next video